Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we are going to talk about writing KOS scripts for Realism Overhaul in the wake of me making a video on how to do that for stock. Well, just the very beginning of it. Even the stock one isn't sufficient for stock really. It was just the very beginnings of it. But since people uh, had high demand for an explanation for Realism Overhaul, we will uh, start discussing how to modify it. With, with the idea that those modifications will still work for stock. It's not going to be like exclusive or anything like that. It'll still be fine, uh, though not always necessary. But anyway, uh, let's quickly take a look at the launch script. This is, of course, a Falcon 9. It's a very good rocket to start off with uh, trying to figure out launch scripts for, especially since uh, a lot of the time people really want to learn how to land the first stage of this with a KOS script. But anyway, here is the stock launch script that we created in the previous KOS tutorial video. And if you haven't seen the stock tutorial for KOS, you need to watch that first to understand what's going on here and to understand how I'm modifying it. First things first, obviously our target apoapsis and periapsis need to be higher than this. Uh, 100 kilometers in realism overhaul with real solar system is not going to be enough. The atmosphere ends at 140. So let's just quickly change that. We don't have inclination handling in here just yet, but we should just put in 28.6 for now. Just remind ourselves we are launching from Cape Canaveral right now. Uh, the first thrust weight ratio for the Falcon 9 right now is 1.25. It's carrying a 9 ton payload so that it can recover the first stage potentially. We don't have uh, any of that recovery stuff in yet, but uh, it's got the landing legs and everything. Uh, we want to have the second thrust weight ratio as something, as a number that we can use. And that happens to be 0.8 right now. And also the final thrust weight ratio, that's the thrust weight ratio the second stage ends at and that is 6.8 right now. So we have those numbers to work with. End altitude, this is the end altitude for the pitch program and we definitely don't want it to end that early. 100,000 divided by the first thrust to weight ratio gives us an ending altitude of about a, let's say 80 kilometers and uh, if the thrust to weight ratio was 2.0 for instance that will bring us to 50 kilometers which still seems reasonable. And important while doing this, think about what might be reasonable for a range of situations. Our final pitch should be dependent on the state of the second stage and the final thrust to weight ratio somehow. Uh, I'm going to say that I'm going to go 45 divided by, and I'm just going to average these two as a first approximation for what I want. So, I'm going to take that, add it to that. And then we'll see whether that gives us a reasonable number and think about different situations. So that, okay, we need another parenthesis here. And then finally a big one to close that out. Okay, so what does this give us? Well, if we average these two out, we end up with 3.8. And 3.8, uh, if we take 45 and divide by 3.8, we get something like 12, 13-ish. And so that'll be the end pitch for the pitch program. That's not bad, um, considering that the thrust weight ratio is eventually going to be pretty high, but it might be too low. We'll see. Uh, we'll see whether this is good enough. And let's think about other situations. Uh, the worst situation is probably the delta 4 upper stage, where the second thrust weight ratio and final thrust weight ratio average out to be something like 0.3 or 0.4. And in that case, this says that it'll pitch, the final pitch for the pitch program is, well, that's pretty high, isn't it? Uh, 45 divided by uh, 0 0.3 or 0.4 will end up pitching it backwards. So that's not going to work. But let's, uh, let's take this uh, as it is and see how we're going to work with it. Okay, now, so far this number isn't being used in any way. I'm just, I've just calculated it. And it has, I mean, yeah, let's just uh, move on with it. Now, the way we did stuff in stock, we had it stop the engine once the apoapsis, once the apoapsis had reached the target periapsis, and then we coasted, 
and then restart the engine at Apoapsis to boost up. This is the burn to Apoapsis, the coast and burn to Apoapsis is sometimes used on rockets in realism overhaul, so we'll keep this in mind and set it to mode eight, but we are not going to we are not going to uh, use it in this case. We're gonna want a different mode three now. So let's copy this. And the condition to get to mode three probably shouldn't be having the periapsis uh, match the, uh, the ship apoapsis match the target periapsis. That's not going to be the best way to go because remember that it's going to be trying to hold this pitch the whole time, all the way up to that point. And I really don't actually want it to just hold this pitch for very long. What I want it to do is to hold this pitch until we get above the atmosphere. So, ship altitude. And this is because in realism overhaul, the planet's bigger, it takes a longer time to get to orbit, and we don't want it to stop the engine first. We want it to have a continuous burn to orbit. And so we will want to do something else once the ship altitude is above the atmosphere, which is 140 kilometers. And then we'll have that be mode three here. Okay, uh, also uh, once the ship is out of the atmosphere, let's also release the fairings. So in this case, toggle, AG1. I've set the fairings to action group 1 and that's how you toggle that and so that will set off the fairings. The fairings are currently just at the a final stage so they're not going to interfere with anything. So we're going to have the same pitch program that we had before this this whole deal and but the out, target altitude is going to be different and final pitch it holds is going to be different a little bit higher than it was with uh, the stock launch and let me save this right now uh, save as so that we have a, a RO launch script and I'm not overwriting the original okay what are the other things that we need to take out, care of right up here well realism overhaul engines take some time to spool up. So we can't just have one staging event here. We're going to have to ignite the engines, wait four seconds, and then stage the clamps. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, in And so at that we could do that in stock as well, that's no problem. Um, but if you wanted to just have it all go immediately, you take this out. And of course, if you've got SRBs, like for the Titan IV, you don't need to do this. Um, because the liquid engine ignites at altitude, so you'll just have one staging event for that. Um, we had a roll issue with this stock one initially. Uh, it uh, kept trying to roll on launch pad, and the way I solve this is I'm gonna uh, get a number called start roll. This is the starting orientation of the craft, and we'll have uh, the user launch script type that in here. And the number I tend to go with is the number uh, on the nav ball that's at the left wing of the nav ball. So there's like a wing, the left wing, 270. So whatever number happens to be over here, that's the number I want as a start roll. And so in here, the way we actually implement that is um, this target roll you have a role like this added to the heading and instead of target role we will just call it start role. We'll have it be target role when we have a launch azimuth and a whole bunch of other stuff to deal with and that's probably gonna be a different episode okay. So we want to propagate that because otherwise if you don't uh, add that to every time you say lock steering the heading it'll try and turn, it'll try and roll it again. So. Every time we see lock steering the heading, we'll make sure, whoops, not inside the parentheses, make sure that we have that. Now, um, this is the mode eight that we're not going to be using. Uh, if ship altitude is like this, set mode to three. Okay, and at some point we're going to say, uh, if ship apoapsis is greater than target periapsis, and I want that to be something else that we do. We're, we're gonna do something else here and that something else will be mode 4. So set mode to 4 and then that something else that we do in mode 4 will be here if mode equals 4. 
So we've basically broken up the launch into a few sections. First section is right off the launch pad until we clear the launch clamps. Uh, second, the pitch program, and that is until we release the fairings and are in space. Third part, uh, we're co uh, continuing to go up at uh, some pitch so that we reach our target periapsis. And then finally, we're, we're going to hold at that altitude, at that uh, periapsis, until we've burned out to our target apoapsis. So basically what we want here is, and note that I'm skipping over what we're actually doing in mode three, if ship Uh, vertical speed, I think it is. Let me just check my script here. In the baseline launch script, it's mode 6, actually. So what we have here is a condition where if the ship vertical speed is high, we pitch down. If it's low, we pitch up. And we try and keep it close to zero. So I'm just going to copy this and explain it. Okay, so if the ship vertical speed, if our vertical speed is more than 20 meters per second and the target pitch is greater than minus 15, which means we're limiting it to pitch down to 15 degrees, and I'll limit it to 10 actually, um, then it's going to uh, pitch down because uh, to a limit of negative 10 degrees. A prograde point is not something we have right now, so that is... Uh, basically like this except we use target pitch that's why we're changing target pitch okay and if it's too far down the vertical speed is very low we pitch up and else if the vertical speed is between 20 meters per second and negative 20 meters per second we just try and get down to zero. We just try and hold it steady. And so that's all it's going to be doing in mode four, basically. Of course, you can see that this launch script has other things going on, but we'll wait on that. Um, we'll keep to the condition for ending the launch script that I've got there, and that will set it to mode nine. Mode nine is just ending things, so yeah, I don't want this conditional here. I just want mode 9 to do the thing. We'll handle the conditional up top. Okay, so if the ship periapsis is greater than 160, forget prograde point, lock throttle to 0, wait 2, set mode to 9. Okay. Now, what about mode 3? Well, this is probably the complicated part for most people. Uh, this is how it's going to handle making sure that it's getting up to speed, right? We have to get up to more than 7,000 meters per second, 7,800 meters per second in realism overhaul. And uh, it's got to make sure that it doesn't arrive at apoapsis too quickly, but also doesn't like not reach apoapsis at all. That would be a problem too. So we've, we've got to manage it properly. And the way my launch script does that is uh, calculating two numbers. And this is the, this number gives us what our apoapsis is expected to be at after we uh, reach, uh, if we continue accelerating uh, once we get there, what the apoapsis is going to be at, as opposed to what it is right now. And the second number is what our speed is going to be at once we reach apoapsis. So, and then it compares those and tries to manage the pitch accordingly. It's a bit complicated. Uh, so, the first thing I need to introduce is the distance formula. M most of you will have seen this before, but it's worth going over. So, the distance, in this case, it's the height. It's our altitude. So when I say distance, I mean altitude in this case. Altitude at time t is equal to the altitude at time 0 plus the velocity at time 0 
times t plus one half your acceler uh, times your acceleration at time oh uh, technically continuous acceleration we'll just leave that be times the time squared so elapsed time whatever the t here is let's say 60 seconds then this is gonna be 60 seconds then this is gonna be 60 seconds this is two seconds then that's two seconds then that's two seconds now we're going just with seconds here um, so we expect that this you know will be meters per second and this is going to be meters per second squared and of course if this is meters per second squared you can see you're getting seconds squared here and so you're going to end up with meters here meters here meters meters so the dimensional analysis works out and why it looks this way is calculus but uh, you, you can learn this in normal physics without calculus too and you can see the parallel between this and this equation you see ship apoapsis is our distance zero in this case and then the ship vertical speed is the v zero we're only concerned about the vertical part of the speed time to apoapsis is a function that we introduced in the stock episode so time to apoapsis uh, gives us the tta here and that's the time that we have left until we get to apoapsis but we still have a vertical speed so we're still going up um, so when we see the ship apoapsis that we currently have we're adjusting that we could put just ship altitude here that's another thing to do but I decided to calculate based on the apoapsis for some reason or another I don't remember but the cute thing is this acceleration now thankfully we are recalculating this every tick every physics tick so uh, we don't have to worry about the fact that acceleration is not constant. Uh, we are recalculating it each time. But the current acceleration here is calculated uh, by another formula, which is... Okay, so the way we calculate the acceleration is if the ship max thrust is greater than 1, we should make sure that our engines are on, otherwise this is going to give a nasty number. Uh, well, okay, 0, but... Um, set the current acceleration to ship max thrust divided by ship mass. So that's just how we calculate the the thrust, the acceleration, the current acceleration. Let's just uh, copy that in mode 3 here for now and tab. That's just something that we're going to need to calculate. Another thing we're going to need to make sure it calculates is that time to apoapsis so we're going to use this time to apoapsis function that we used previously and just put that up top there okay so we have those numbers to use the acceleration and time to apoapsis now taking a look back at the mode that we're looking at here okay so it takes that acceleration multiplies it by the sine of the prograde pitch well the thing is the acceleration has a horizontal component and a vertical component and so we need to make sure that we're getting the vertical component alone and then subtracting out gravity now 9.81 isn't strictly speaking the gravitational acceleration at the altitudes we might be at but I just oversimplified and then multiply by times square as we expect prograde pitch well how do we get the pitch when we've got KOS. Pitch is actually a little bit more complicated than you might think. Um, and we've got this set prograde pitch to pro pitch. And there's another function here called pro pitch. And this is the function I use to calculate pitch. So you're just going to have to copy this. Uh, this is how, it's, uh, how we get it. So return 90 minus V angle ship colon up colon vector comma ship colon velocity colon surface and parentheses period and so there's a vector angle between one vector and another vector and we're taking 90 minus that and that'll give us our pitch so we're going to copy this function in down below so there's only the second function we're adding to this right now so that's pro pitch and here we said set prograde pitch to pro pitch well we don't actually have to do it in here uh, it's alright to uh, we, we can do it all the way up here and say set prograde pitch to pro pitch 
pro pitch will just uh, what you got um, output that number I just don't want something with parentheses inside the equations and everything and then understanding what the the feed AP here is this is the distance formula we just copy that and again it's legal to use ship altitude but we're going to use ship apoapsis so that gives us, you know, the expected ship apoapsis after we, once we reach that point. And then we have a velocity formula, and velocity is two times the acceleration uh, times the time to apoapsis plus the ship ground speed, and this will just give the horizontal component of the uh, acceleration. Well, that's the intention, but okay, why is it two times? It technically is just VT. It should just be VT. Oh, sorry, not VT, AT. Basically, hmm, I don't know how to explain this. Uh, we're sort of straddling the apoapsis with this number. Just go with it. I mean, if you want to put acceleration times time to apoapsis, that's fine too. Uh, I won't judge you. Uh, but I'm going to use this number. So, velocity potential. And we're going to pitch up and down based on the comparison between how close we are to the velocity that we're looking for which is 7,800 meters per second and uh, whether we're at the altitude that we're looking for or we're expecting to be close to the altitude we're looking for and that's what this does okay if the that is less than the target periapsis so if the expected ship apoapsis is less than the target periapsis or this number here is too darn slow now it's 7,400 because it's the ground speed which doesn't include the acceler uh, doesn't include the rotation of the Earth. Okay, so that's the ground speed. So we have to take that into consideration. Uh, so if either we are falling short on altitude or we're fa falling short on speed, and the target pitch is less than a max pitch that we're going to set, pitch up. Set target pitch to uh, target pitch plus a little bit, and then wait. That's a hundredth of a second. If on the other hand, we're too high or we're too fast, pitch down. And again, this is uh, not fast right now. This is too fast once we reach apoapsis. It's trying to calculate what is our velocity by the time we reach apoapsis, what is it going to be after this time elapses. I know this is complicated, and this is going to be the complicated part of the whole business, but. Uh, we're just going to copy this and double check that we have all the relevant numbers. That's there. There shouldn't be any complication. It shouldn't tell me, oops, I don't have that number, except max pitch we haven't set yet. I'm going to tell it that it can go up to 20 degrees and down to minus 10 degrees. We'll work on that later. That should depend on the acceleration. The higher the acceleration, the lower I want the pitch to be. I want it uh, closer to zero. So, uh, But for now, we'll just go arbitrary with it. OK, and then it'll try and hold uh, between 20 meters per second and negative 20 meters per second. And then it'll check once we reach there. OK, let's see what goes wrong now. I think this is the first modifications I want to do. And we'll see how bad off we are. Okay, back to our Falcon 9 rocket here. We're going to do edit RO launch, let's just call it. Be generic about it. And run RO launch. First of all, let's see if there are any errors. Did I miss a period or something? Doesn't seem like it. Okay, so wait the four seconds, and you'll note it's not rotating right now. It is doing a lot of roll wiggle. That's a bit annoying, but it's not affecting the trajectory much. We'll deal with the roll wiggle later. So far, we'll note it's going fairly steep. This is much steeper than it ought to go. Though that is handy for returning the first stage. So not necessarily a problem. But really way too steep. Way too steep. 
fortunately we definitely have enough uh, Delta V because we're carrying a load that would allow the first stage to return and we're not actually having the first stage return right now. We're not having it reserve the fuel. Alright, we're getting close to the final pitch here. Up oh, is holding right above 10 degrees it looks like. 15 seconds left in this stage. Time to apoapsis, close to 2 minutes. Apoapsis is 140 kilometers. Okay, separation and ignition of the second stage. And we expect fairing separation at 140 kilometers. And right now it cannot change the pitch, it's just holding that pitch determinately. And we'll see how that works out. Oh, we have an error. Target pitch is less than 20. It doesn't know what target pitch is. Undefined variable name. Okay, well, let's take a look. That happens. See, it's good about telling us where the problem is. Line 60. So, line 60, we've got a target pitch here. Was that not what we were using? Hmm, we were using the term pitch aim here. So that's the problem. Uh, with my other script I use target pitch. Well, let's just change everything to set target pitch and then uh, target pitch. Okay, new script is in. Run RO launch. So basically in order to have it not constantly wiggle the roll, the best thing to do is to say, tell it if the roll is a little bit more than what we want, then correct. If it's a little bit less than what we want, then correct, but don't correct otherwise. Just like we did for pitch, if it's too high, we correct down, if it's too low, we correct up. But we don't correct if it's in the middle, like between 20 meters per second and negative 20 meters per second. We want to give it some uh, tolerance room so that it doesn't constantly do this. And as long as there's some sort of tolerance room, like it's okay to be uh, between 269 and 271. If we say that it's okay to be between 269 and 271, it won't constantly go back and forth like this. Last time it failed when we separated the fairings, so at 140 kilometers we'll find out how it goes this time. Okay, it's separated off and it's pitching up noticeably. Not too severe, uh, though it's right at the limit right now. We limited it to 20 degrees, remember. And it, uh, to be fair, it'll always hit the limit. To, um, whenever you do that it's gonna hit the limit so we need a more refined calculation to figure out what the pitch ought to be to give us the best results. We can see that the time to apoapsis is steadily going down and we're very very close to our target periapsis and the reason it's holding the pitch up right now is because of our speed not because of the height. Remember there's two conditions it has to be going fast and it has to be at a reasonable height. Now it pitches down and we've probably gone into the next mode which is to keep your vertical speed close to zero mode. We'll see how this works. So vertical speed is close to zero, it's at zero pitch. Vertical speed less than negative 20, pitch up. And you can see it's trending the vertical speed towards zero. Nope, no, not good enough. Wiggle up a little bit more. This little wiggle is not ideal, but that's why my baseline launch script is rather a bit longer than, than what I've got so far here. Okay, we're about to make orbit here. And it shuts down at 213 by 266. Now the reason it's 213 by 266 is you saw how very fast 
it had to shut down there in order to uh, I mean because it was accelerating so much now it would like some way of throttling down uh, but the condition said at the bottom if we take a look if and ship periapsis greater than 160 kilometers so that's why we got to 166 and we got three kilometers off on the apoapsis um, we are not going to get the kind of uh, tight apoapsis and periapsis that you can in stock because the acceleration is just too much. Uh, but, well, unless you have a very low accelerating engine like an RL10 or something like that, in which case maybe you can get a little bit closer. With the Merlin 1D, it's such a high thrust engine on such a light stage that it's really hard to hit the numbers exactly. Anyway, what happens though if we try and launch not to this 210 apoapsis, but instead to a higher apoapsis. If we take a look at the, the situation here, we've got 2,000 meters per second here. And that's not enough for geosynchronous transfer, but I don't think they would have carried 9.4 tons. I think it is 9.4 tons. Well, let's just... 9.426 tons. We need to lighten up the payload. And let's say we put 5 tons on here. Can we launch it to a geosynchronous transfer orbit? Let's find out. Okay, so I've got a 4.7 ton payload on this now, and we've set the target apoapsis to 35,786, um, and we've kept the target periapsis the same. Now, you remember when we wrote this script and all throughout it, we've been telling it to aim for the target periapsis, and we'll see why that is on this launch, because we don't want it uh, going away from the Earth too much. It'll be much more efficient if we stay close to the Earth while burning to our apoapsis than if we were constantly trying to get to our apoapsis uh, along the way. So we're going to aim for 210 and it'll stay close to 210 on this side of the planet while boosting to the target apoapsis on the opposite side of the planet. That is not how Falcon 9 actually does it. What most launches do is they shut down the upper stage engine, coast to the equator, and then do the uh, geosynchronous transfer burn at the equator because that'll make it uh, possible to adjust the inclination at the apoapsis. So yeah, this is not actually how they do it, but this will be a good test to see that we can aim for an elliptical orbit without any problems and verify that this whole target apoapsis and target periapsis thing actually works as it's supposed to. So uh, that's what we've got there. Let's see if it works. Run RO launch. For the most part this should work the way it has before but we do have half the payload size. Previously we were carrying a 9.4 ton payload. This time we are carrying a 4.7 ton payload and so it is an open question whether that will change anything whether it'll just work out. There are a lot of things that we need to work on after this, uh, including this little roll oscillation issue, uh, having the launch azimuth and making sure that we can get to any inclination, including polar orbits, and you know stuff like that. Uh, thrust limiting to limit the g-forces. Also fixing this inefficiency as far as launching very steeply is concerned right now good for recovering the first stage, I'll have to say, bad for the whole trying to get to orbit with the maximum payload. So yeah, there, there are plenty of things that we have to do, and that's why the baseline launch script is much longer than the one we have here right now, but for now this is hopefully going to work out for starters. Okay, first stage separation, second stage ignition. Fairing separation is good, and we continue with quite a bit of delta V. Okay, we've reached the part where it holds the vertical speed between 20 and negative 20. And you can see right here why we definitely do not want it to read the time to apoapsis as it does by default because it jumps from 0 to 49 minutes 
it would throw things off pretty badly as far as calculations and that's why we've got that special function to make sure that uh, starts counting it in negative terms after it passes zero instead of just going to a really huge number. Okay, we have made orbit now, and as I wanted it to, it's holding the periapsis and keeping its vertical speed to zero or close to zero while boosting the apoapsis on the opposite side of the planet. Good thing about the Falcon 9 is it uh, has a lot of thrust, but of course we will eventually want to have some way of limiting the g-forces, but still, the vast amount of thrust means that we will be able to stay very close to this periapsis while we're doing the entire burn. For something like an RL-10, it might drift away eventually, because it just can't uh, pitch down or up enough to hold the vertical speed close to zero. But there we have it, and we wanted 35,786, but because there was so much thrust and we weren't uh, throttling down, we got 36,437 instead. Though actually the launch, uh, the script says uh, target apoapsis times 0 .0, uh, 1.01, .01, so we have a 1% margin on the target, but still there's more than that 1%. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's what we get. More refinement is necessary but uh, we've got something here to work with and hopefully this will be helpful. So with this I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video please do press like. If you have any comments or questions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.